Sales NBL 2023 season, and your champions are the Canterbury Rams. For the first time in 30 years, Coach John Flavel has done it again. He's at the top of the mountain in the New Zealand NBL. Kia ora and welcome to another edition of Who Pairs and man what a season we have had with the Sales NBL and it has just wrapped up a huge final six. Brooke Rusco here joined by the voices of basketball Andrew Mulligan and Casey Frank and there is also another guest with us today. Ooh, no one happier than this man, a now three time champion coach in the Sales NBL, Coach Chuck Flavel. How you feeling? The champ is here! <laughs> Uh, yeah, feeling a whole mix of uh, feelings, I guess, um, relief and uh, tired, and, and but uh, you circle back and you remember every sort of 10 minutes or so, oh yeah, we, we just won it, so uh, jubilation, yeah, everything, whole mixture. So you, you played three games in four nights, you look like, and you said this before, before we went to Ed Judd, you stripped it back and kept it simple. Now, does that mean that as a coach, you just didn't really do much in, the, in, the, in that game. What happened here? How did you get those guys on the same page? And you had lapses through in the season. They didn't have one against the Tua They didn't fold. They didn't wilt. They didn't give up a lead. Yeah, I, I think uh, sometimes coaches, we, we stress out too much about, you know, all the information that you see out there. And uh, sometimes you just got to get a bit of a feel of what your group, what, what you got going on. And with that quick turnaround, as you say, three games in four days. I mean, we planned a lot for the Hawks Bay game. Um, kind of knew our opponent would be Otago if we got through that one. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I mean, keeping it simple for our group was probably the best thing that we could have done against the Tuatara. And, um, you know, I, I think, uh, like I was saying, as a coach, you kind of stress probably too much and, and worry about too much. Um, but, yeah, look, the guys were great. Got stronger throughout the fourth quarter. Um, and probably the pace of the game really suited us, you know. Um, you know, kind of slowed down a lot as a typical final and it sort of you know, allowed Corey to sort of dictate some things down the stretch. And, you know, of course, we had some some pieces there that can make some shots as well. The way Corey played sort of the, over the last week or so, he lifted his game up so much. You know, he, some rumors that he was dealing with an injury through the season got right in the finals. But what kind of advantage did his one-on-one -on -one skills? I mean, in the fourth quarter against Hawks Bay, Corey made some huge shots. You know, a lot of the action, I think, down the stretches of those games was you putting the hands in Corey, spreading the floor and allowing him to go to work. What kind of a security blanket is that for you as a coach and a team? Well, when you get to play off basketball, as we know, like it, it's going to come down to those last stages of the game. And, you know, we had, I guess, probably not the best of finishes throughout the season, um, knowing that, uh, I guess, <clears throat> trying to find our way throughout the season. And that, that's kind of what the season felt like with us. Still getting to familiarize ourselves with the, I guess, the, um, the way, how we want to finish the games, uh, who we were going to go to. Um, losing Ty Winyard was probably a, a big sort of reshuffle of, of the pieces. And um, but once we had secured Corey, you just knew that okay, if this ball game's tight and you need something, like he's not only going to create a, a, a half decent look for himself, which is all he needs, but he's going to find the right pass as well. And uh, so having the ball in his hands really suited us. And, and, and of course, you know, I think uh, getting the ball over the court as well, like when you're facing the team that's sort of uh, going to apply a full court pressure. And, you know, he may, he may have, uh, I guess he's not as um, more explosive younger self, but just has the ball on a string and security, um, able to absorb the foul, go get to the line and, and knock those down. So, yeah, you know, that's, that's what he does. He has had an illustrious career and someone who's just kind of beginning his career is Walter Brown, Youth Player of the Year. Uh, went from strength to strength. Obviously, I don't think for you or thought it was a gamble starting him at the start of the year and having an import coming off the bench, but he plays these huge extended minutes. Mm -hmm. He is going to be a big part of basketball here in New Zealand for a long, long time. Just tell us about how special he is. Yeah, look, when I got here last year and, and really sort of got to see, we had an import that uh, was starting in front of him and... Uh, the more I got to see Walter daily, you know, just like, man, this guy is just like his contribution to, to winning. And um, with all the little things that probably go, go unnoticed, but it's great that people are starting to notice that. He played arguably the biggest role for us because he's one of those stabilizing pieces um, that just keeps us together. And a glue piece, um, you know, and, and teams that have winning, you know, winning, I guess, cultures or championships, they have players like this guy. Um, so he, he's uh, 
yeah, he's so young and, and so, you know, got a lot to offer in, in terms of like his, his skill set can get a lot better. And, and But we're just starting to see the, the beginning of it at all. Um, yeah, huge future. And, and I think this championship will be one of those moments in his career that could really springboard him to the next level. What about the impact that Max Darling had defensively on Rob Lowe? Rob Lowe has got the, the ability to look over the top of defences, find those cutters like Charlie Dalton on the baseline. But Max really muscled up. He really bodied him up really well. He took him out of his spots. Was that the plan with Max and your defence to get Rob a little bit uncomfortable, even though that's very hard to do with the MVP? Yeah, Rob Lowe was obviously MVP and deservedly so, like, you know, number two two was not even close to him mm. um but max darling like uh, this was a huge season for him uh really saw like a lot of maturity in his game and, and not just uh when there's the the ball in his hands but the things that he was doing without the ball um we've really seen a lot of growth and development and maturity um you talk about the matchup like whenever we had a team like Walter Brown and Max Darling got the matchups against the other teams whichever who were the two whether it was a guard or, or big like those two were, were our two key figureheads in, in the defensive uh, side of things and Max's ability to switch on to guards and I think you know he had a couple of good possessions of keeping Ruben in front of him um, going back to the Otago game where he just kept uh, Ty Webster in front of him poked the ball out you know just seeing the, the evolution of his game is exciting and um, you know we all know that he's got potential and uh, but that matchup with Rob Lowe was, was a great one uh, for, for Max and, and certainly he's, he's a unique specimen he's, he's quick enough to guard those ones he's strong enough to guard the fives um, yeah like a, a real luxury to have and, and uh, yeah really excited for what lays ahead for him got this far and somehow we haven't talked about Tevin Brown all-star mm. five on the season MVP of the finals and hit some huge shots his shot making ability his ability to create spaces what's impressed me most about him all season long especially I think with his quickness that finds another level I mean can you uh, just, just share a little bit about his evolution because he was a player who despite having that high level of talent didn't take over games for large stretches but rather fit in let the game come to him and after you answer that let me know what do you, do you think he's a guy who's got a chance as an Australian NBL uh uh, import pl caliber player? Yeah, Teva was, um, you know, someone that we really got to learn a lot about and uh, we, we were really excited when we sort of were recruiting him and, and the player that we were going to get. When we got here, we just realized he's just so unselfish, you know, just, and he needed to be more selfish for us at times. He would pass up, you know, he'd come off an action. Teams would focus in on him. He'd, he'd get rid of the ball and then just stop and just uh, sort of spectate. And we're like, Tevin, we need you to keep working off another action. Like the best advantage we can create is utilizing your gravity and, and your speed that he has off the basketball. Um, you know, sort of, you know, you don't see that quality uh, too many times in players and the way that they, 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 they can move off the basketball. Um, so that was the evolution throughout the season. And, um, you know, like uh, he's still got things that I think that he can definitely improve on his pick and roll game is, is certainly one that you know to be an elite uh or go and play a high elite levels possibly in europe uh but getting to your question about playing in australia oh, like i definitely think so he's a great person you know that in, in that level there half the battle is sort of fitting into a culture and and in and a, and a role and and uh you know there's plenty of imports that um that are very good players but um you know also need to be able to fit within that structure he certainly can do that, um, and he loves this part of the world. So, yeah, hopefully he does get that opportunity. Um, you know, certainly you would love to see him sort of stick around this part of the world. How hard is it to keep this uh, this unit together? I know uh, getting imports to returns are very hard, if uh, almost impossible, with the exception of Todd Withers. How, how hard are you working guys over right now when they're a little bit dusty, a little bit tired, want to say yes, and then the afterglow? <laughs> Yeah, the timing's right right now, right? Just <laughs> slipping in there. Um, now, look, it, it's a young group. I mean, the core of the group was super young. And, and going back to when we had Ty Winyard here, who was like a, one of our marquee pieces, um, and it was really exciting to see, well, we got Walter Brown, Max Darling, Ty Winyard, you know, Taylor Britt, sort of your, your core pieces, young young group. And, um, and the, the thought pattern was like, this is a young group that maybe we can build this over time and, and have a real great... Uh, run over the next three years and uh, look I mean 
tasting success right now, I, I, I think it's, uh, yeah, you're right. It's always tough to keep everybody together. But um, I think these guys love playing for Canterbury. You know, like it's a, it's a home for them. And, and it's certainly something that uh, this club they, does a great job of looking after people. Um, you know, they've been crying out for success, I think, for, for forever. Um, and, and to have this this taste of success here and, and come down the net, I think it's, uh, yeah, I, I think it's a great thing for them. And, and I hopefully, you know, that they are all keen to um, you know, carry this thing going because it's a young group, it's an exciting group. And um, yeah, they're all they're all pretty much being locals here for forever. I don't know. Is the coach on contract? That was really. <laughs> yeah. Is, there, is, there, is, is Johnny on contract? Is he back next year? <laughs> <laughs> Are you breaking up? <laughs> hey, Daddy, congratulations. Up. Congratulations. Your third title, but their first title in three decades. Well deserved. Hell of an effort. You did it the hard way and you got it done. So congratulations on the title this year. Awesome. Thanks for having me, boys. And it was a great ride. Appreciate it. Jordan. Appreciate you. Thanks, Chad. Now, let's take a look at how they actually got there. It started Thursday night, and there's been a lot of controversy about the first game, uh, but they did they did get it done 100 I, I haven't heard anything. No, I mean, well, we can touch on it just in case you I've missed been, it. I've been well, checking comments. I haven't seen much in any socials. But Troy Baxter Jr. was huge off the bench, and it came down to kind of that last shot in overtime. This man here, hand him any kind of space, and he's going to make you pay. Yeah, look, those kind of plays... Um, and the one that's been the most talked about, you know, unfortunately, you have to ride your luck. And it's been that kind of season for Hawks Bay, and it's been that kind of uh, end of the season for the Canterbury Rams. And unfortunately uh, for Hawks Bay, it ended right there and then. There's still a lot talked about it, but the Canterbury Rams advanced. I mean, mostly unfortunate that it took away from what was a fantastically played game. Mm. I mean, the, the comeback that the Hawks made yeah. in that fourth quarter, I think started off on a 17-2 run. <laughs> the Corey Webster shot making after that big run to actually lift his squad because they looked dead in the water just to give them a chance. They were down five with 30 seconds left. I mean, everything had to break just right to get that lucky break with, with the call, with the call that's missed that, you know, sometimes happens. Troy Baxter Jr., fantastic. His athleticism in the full court in that one. Tevin Brown, that's where he started. 17 points in that first half. But for the for the Hawks Bay, I mean, Jordan Natai, uh, Jordan Hunt, especially late, really impressed me. The two Jordans almost carried into victory. Almost. But, uh, Man, I'm still, I'm still a little bit sick about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they did do the job. And then the next night, the next game, excuse me, it was the Bulls versus the Saints. And the Bulls, arguably the best game that we saw from them all year, took down the Saints by 20 points. They put on 124 against those guys. Defensively, they got it done. The Saints came out. They tried to run. They pushed the pace. Isaiah Liapa was great. But so was Jared Wilson frame. Mm. And Isaac Isaac Davidson was, was huge too. Ricky McGill and can't, can't forget about Dan Foster. They were a, a slow-paced, grindy team, defensive-minded at the start of the season. And I think the players relished the fact that the Saints came out and tried to run mm. because it gave them the ability to go, all right, finally, Second. you want to run with us? Yeah. We are the Bulls. Run with us. We can do this. And, and uh, I think well, welcoming back Ty Tyrell Harrison and his ability to really affect the interior. Limited minutes in that game, 16 minutes, but really slowed down the effectiveness of Elijah Thomas and Tohi Smith-Milner inside. Liafa in that first half was tremendous. It looked like the Saints were going to blow the doors off mm -hmm. offensively, but somehow they came back. You know, you talk to the Bulls, if they knew that they were tied at 59 at peace at halftime, or if, if the, the, even that the Saints, they would have been like, we scored 59 at halftime, yeah. that's great. The way they shot the ball, of course, it was Jared Wilson frame. Those six threes, that's what stretched it out, and the Saints just couldn't keep up. And a great year for Dan Paul, too. He went from strength to strength. Ricky McGill was great on the defensive end. I think the question I have now is the Wellington Saints. It's a couple years where we're so used to them being so dominant. They have a rich history of championships, Casey. Mm -hmm. You know all about that. What happens with the Saints next? Oh, they blow it up. <laughs> <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> they blow it up. Uh, they, they strip it back, they rebuild it, and they will rearm. And there, If there's one thing that is certain in this League. The Saints hate losing at any point and rebuild with ferocity. Ooh, they go out and they sign what they can and sign what they wanted to get. Yeah, they're, they're going to find a team that's better suited to, to work. They're going to find a, a better mix of players that's going to be able to go down the stretch. And I don't know, the last couple of years, they, they've taken this chance of, of not having full squads at the start of the season. Yeah. Are, are they going to make the decision that we need to have a fuller squad earlier and build from that to build that camaraderie? Well, time will tell. Let's take a look at semifinal number two. It was a quick turnaround because that Bulls game was late at night. They wrapped it up and then they had to come and play, play the number one seed, the 
Tuatata, and the Tuatata, they meant business from the start. They came out with a point to prove, and they got busy. Well, it started off, the Bulls really came out and, and threw the first punch. Yeah. It looked like they were going to be able to pressure this Tuatata team into some issues, but once they got comfortable, they just found another level, and comfortable is the word that really spoke to me most in that game. They never looked uh, really disturbed after that first quarter by anything the Bulls were able to do. Complete control, transition in the half court all over there. And a hell of a season from the Bulls as well. Dan Sokolowski did an amazing job. Fingers crossed they keep their foundation and yeah. youth together. Love the and Bulls. And they're going to go strength to strength. Let's take a look For, at... First time in the finals. That's a great accomplishment. Yeah, yeah. Great accomplishment. Let's take a look at semifinal number two now with the Nuggets taking on the Rams. And it was a Webster affair. Obviously, Ty Webster was a part of the number two seed. Otago Nuggets taking on his brother, Corey Webster. What do you make of this game, boys? Oh, look, Sam Timmons, I thought, was probably the best game he played all season long. Uh, he, he probably thinks either A, it is, or B, I had another game in the regular season. But he stepped up when it counted. But the Rams, they're just too deep. Um, I mean, they, the, the Nuggets cooked it by having Robbie Coleman not on the, on, on the score sheet and not checking that and signing it off before the game. They, they lost the key part of their grit and grind, the, the, the headband gang, whatever you want to call them. Those role players have served them so well, especially at the start of the regular season when they got out and they were beating teams with their defense. Maybe the best game I've seen San Timmons play, uh, I think especially when you're talking about what was on the line, the way he dominated down that stretch to give them the lead. But then uh, another call goes their way and it shows the mental fortitude of this Rams team. I mean, they were down early in this one as well, worked their way back into it down late. Uh, when the Nuggets came all the way back with just a couple of minutes left and then were able to close that one with, I think it was a 10-2 run to finish. So really impressive. Once again, this Bulls squad, they understood who they were. They understood how they were getting buckets down the stretch and they they, they stuck to the game plan. And a luxury to have someone like Corey Webster and Baxter Jr. coming off the bench. Luxury! I mean, that's not the worst. But that's the key. If you're going to win three games in four nights, you're going to need to go nine deep in this league. Any league for that matter. Mm -hmm. Seven deep isn't going to do it, obviously, for the Tuatata. They're going to have to do something around on Rob Lowe um, and get a little bit deeper, bring in maybe a couple more, maybe two more imports and really go import heavy to Comlin because there's no Jared Weeks next year. He's, he's done. So they need a point guard that can step up to that level for them. Well, let's take a look at the grand final and for the Tuatata second time in a row that they have made it through and the second time that they have lost the grand final going down 82-93 to the Rams. Ruben Tarangi was huge for oh, the yeah. start. He was amazing. Just that. didn't really have the help that he had all year long when no one else really came to the party Probably in terms of scoring. the best defender on Ruben Tarangi was half time because he came out of halftime and they obviously a, adjusted or just kept him to three points in that, um, in that second half there. Well, to, to me, it was just the defensive game plan overall. Once they, they started challenging Charlie Dalton to hit those threes out of the corner, he, he did hit one. He was game shooter, but they weren't afraid of him, and that enabled them to play off, make things difficult, take away those driving lanes. There just wasn't position to cut. There wasn't position to put the ball on the floor, and eventually the, the oxygen just got choked out of the Tuatata offense. Well, there's one thing we talked about during actually the broadcast is how are the league's going to be with the Rams, and as close as the game can stay, and if momentum comes with you, all of a sudden leagues, they just go out the window. And I thought Aaron Young did a good job of, while his team was maintaining that lead, he wouldn't call any quick timeouts. He let the game play out. But they had enough in the tank to get it done and have an 11-point win down in that fourth quarter. But also, we talked about it. You have Corey Webster and Tevin Brown. You just, hey, boys, game's go yours. <laughs> go to work. <laughs> go to work. And we've talked about a lot of guys for the Rams, but we haven't mentioned Taylor Britt yet and his timely scoring. We mm -hmm. haven't mentioned Quinn Clinton, who, you know, comes off, hits one three, but that's a big three mm -hmm. when you're trying to get things, these things done. And I think he averages three and he shoots 41% <laughs> or 40% from the three-point line. Get that triple that's going. That's his role. <laughs> Shoot more. And I think one of the luxuries that they also had is they knew that they were a team. They had a, they had a great foundation of Tevin Brown was their leading mm. scorer. He only averaged 15, uh, 18, excuse me. Uh, Taylor Britt led them in assists. He averaged four. And Max Darling led them and rebounds and he averaged five yeah so across the board it was strength and numbers we're going to do this as a team and yeah. the result was they took out the championship and they won it all the 10th guy on the rams bench kai isaac didn't get a burn at all well a hell of a season <laughs> it has wrapped up congratulations once again to the canterbury rams who have taken out the 2023 sales nbl let's take a look at the tawihi league it's it's busy man one thing stops another one continues let's take a, the re, a look at sorry the results of round two and the car who got that first one against the pole Kai. And then the second one, the Kahu went down against the Queens as the curtain raiser for that grand final. Uh, let's start with the first one with the Kahu taking down the Poakai. But they, they have 
they have the business across the board. They have players, they have numbers, and they can get it done. I know they've dropped a couple, but they can get it done. Well, a little bit of concern. They haven't been playing uh, winning basketball just yet. You know, some, some concerns, of course, around Talia Tupaya mm -hmm. and her shoulder. Uh, it, it popped out a little mm -hmm. bit, didn't look full strength in this one, and then it happened again in the second game. But impressive down low. I mean, uh, Amari Thomas, her strength, not only as a post player, but also she's got the ability to shoot the ball from deep as well. Panina Davidson, it's so great to have her back. Double double in her first game, 14 points, 14 rebounds. And she was the one they went to late when it looked like the Bullock guy were going to come back. I mean, they were down huge in that game. They yeah. fought all the way back. It was great to see Lauren Hippolyte, uh, Ezra McGoldrick, and Kennedy Leonard really try and drive that all the way back in. But n just not enough in the end. The Kahu get their first win of the season, and they're relieved from it because they're not playing their best basketball yet. Yeah, they survived that one, didn't they? Because I, I imagine when you get up in a, in a big lead, you just if you start to feel like you're comfortable, that's when the other team will seize on it. And Tara Reid as well, um, knowing that she can um, just be a third scorer when she could easily be a leading scorer as well. It bodes well for Kahu. Well, let's talk about that next one, the Kahu and the Queens. And last year, the Kahus ran through the league except for when it came to the Queens. And oh. once again, is it the bogey team? The Queens obviously went on and won it, so I don't want to take anything away from them. But it's just the one team that they couldn't get over last year as well. The Queens, can I just say, that is a fire uniform as well, but also... Love the mint. They have, in Steph Watts, an unreal WNBA player. And for those that don't know, Casey will explain to you how ruthless the WNBA is at the moment. <laughs> well, I mean, it is ruthless. First round picks get cut. You know, top 10 picks are cut this season before training camp gets finished. So when people say, oh, why are these players over here? It's because there's not a lot of teams and there's a ton of talent. We are so blessed with the level of import talent we have here this year. It is, there is no easy beats in this league. And as good as the local talent is, they're lifting, they're, they're getting to that professional level across the board, but the import talent is a sight to behold, man. Steph Watts in the in the open court was the business. Man, it was fun to watch her play. Well, she had 26, but Crystalyn Carr is great as well. She's one of those <laughs> players you can just throw the ball and let her play. She can dance around with it. She can step back. She can get to the rim slightly shorter than everybody else, but you give her the ball, and man, she can, she can play. Didn't hit a three, but Scott dropped 26 and 25 points. I mean, unbelievable shooting percentages. Shooting percentages are up. Last season, that was quite low uh, for the Toihi, but this year, it's starting to get better. But also for the Kahu, it's not that bad because Crystal Ledger Walker has entered the chat. She's, she's That's on not that. bad, is so, it? So it's, it's going to be okay for the Kahu when they split two games. I think they're going to be yeah. just fine. Still got Madden to come to. Always, yeah. always good to get an Opal captain. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at that ladder. We're just a couple rounds into this bad boy already, but the Southern Hoi Hoi have changed things around quickly compared to last year. They're sitting at number one. The Queens, the reigning champs, one and one, Northern Kahu, three games. And the surprise for all of us, I think, is that they've dropped two, five down the bottom there. And to wrap it up, the Polakai still get to get their first win on the board. Let's take a look at the games that are coming ahead this week. First one is going to be in Tauranga. It's the Fire versus the Queens. That's Wednesday night. The Polakai and Hoi Ho, that is Thursday down in Christchurch. And then to wrap that bad boy up, Friday, 6.30 at Franklin Pool and Leisure and Pukekohe. Excuse me, two more. Uh, the Queens and the Polakai, which is on Saturday. And then Sunday, to wrap it up, it's the Hoi Ho back down in Dunedin at the Edgar Centre. Huge game. The Kahu. Really excited to see the Hoi Ho back on court. Ashton Prechtel, uh, she was fa mm. fantastic in the, the, the first couple of rounds, or the first round, and really going to see what she's dominating up and down. Interested to see what the Fi have as well. Mm. They haven't played since the opening game of the season. And in that game, uh, just five players scored, and yeah. two of them combined for, I believe, seven points. So they're going to have to learn, figure out a way to stretch out that scoring load. Yeah. I, I mean, that's a really big game for the Hoi Ho and the Kahu as well, because um, if they are going to be the champs, if they want their credentials approved, then they pick up those games in Christchurch and at home in Dunedin. That's going to be huge for them because then they will not be chased down. Yeah. No slowing down that. Now, there's something that uh, you guys know so, so well. It's called Yeah Nah, Nah Yeah. <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> All right, your questions this week, boys. I'm already enjoying this. <laughs> <laughs> has there been a team this year that has more bad luck than the Hawks Bay Hawks? Oh, oh, no. Yeah, nah, 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 bro. Nah. 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 <laughs> Prayers up, Hawks, oh, fay, Hawks uh, fans. Flush the dunny and move on. Sorry, There's not much you can do about it. Uh, an early prediction for next year. Can the Rams go back to back? Now, I know you've said with your chest already the Saints, so that's, yep. a, that's a no. Mm. Case, can the Rams go back to back? 
Yeah, yeah, I think they can. I think they've got great local talent. They've really done a good job with uh, one of the junior clubs down there, the Mainland Eagles, producing some talent. And I think in the next couple of years, we could see those guys like uh, Taylor Britt, uh, like uh, Quinn Clinton, like Thomas Webley, Walter, like Kai Walter Isaac, Brown. like Walter Brown, take a, really mm. take a much larger role in the offense and what they're doing. Could Amar Thomas be the best big in Tawai? She averages 24 and 9.3 rebounds. Thomas could be, but nah, because I'm going to go Ashton Prechtel. Yeah. Yeah. Hell of a first round she had as well. I really agree, but I agree with Jason. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. uh, have the mainland Polo Kai show on the importance of winning rapid link games. Yes, and the, and the beauty of the Rapid League games, if you win it, you get a competition point for your Toehi standings as well, don't you? Yeah. One of the four points available. Yeah, 25% of the ladder belongs to that. And, you know, one of these five teams is going to miss out on the finals. Well, that's probably going to come down to the Rapid League. So teams yeah. really have to put a lot into that and make sure that they're getting the points there, at least with some regularity. Well, we're wrapped up with the NBA. Let's talk NBA really quickly. One question. Will Damian Lillard ever actually leave Portland? I mean, he ain't in Portland. He ain't never coming back. <laughs> can we Someone just, in my ear saying. Can we just over your shoulder get some white tape and put another zero on that one? <laughs> yeah. that, that's now Scoot's jersey. So that is a no. He will no <laughs> yeah. longer be in Portland. Uh, guys, hell of a show. Hell of a year. Any closing words that you'd like to say on the year that we've just had with the sales NBL? Strength of strength, man. I, I just, I, I love seeing the local talent develop. I, I loved seeing a competition that was even across the board up until three weeks left. Everybody had a shout for the finals and you, you, you know, I, I can't wait to get to next year, but I'm going to take a little break. Just read a little. Re read this one, watch some Toe Eve, get excited about this season and, and get back next season for Sal's 24 because it's going to be amazing. Mm. I love seeing the teams engage their fan base and mm. I love seeing fans turn up day in, day out for these teams. It was really cool to see uh, the Jets they didn't make it, the years didn't make it, but they always had fans turn up to them. They made games. it enjoyable. And they made it enjoyable. And they made what the league is going to be because these players won't perform at their highest level in this league without fans behind them and cheering them on and getting those home wins, unfortunately, for teams like Hawks Bay. It took a while to reward <laughs> those fans, but they were still there. Absolutely. One hell of a year. Once again, congratulations to the Canterbury Rams. Are your 2023 Sales NBL champions? First time in 31 years. First time in 31 years. What an anomaly. Well done, boys. First well time done. in 31 years. That is the show. Are you back next week? I think so. Yes. <laughs> Come on. So exciting. Back next week, everyone.